I'm building a tiny vacation home on wheels. Shut up and sit down. revisions on the layout thinking well maybe I can put it under the bed but then I lose a whole cabinet or maybe I can create a cabinet and have a fixed toilet or this other solution where I purchased this ottoman and hopefully this toilet will fit inside this ottoman so not only will I have something to sit on but I'll also have something that I can move around and if it floods or leaks I can always throw the ottoman away and get another one so that way I'm not having to rip out the entire van. So, let's move Mr. Emoji Poo out the way. This is the Camco toilet. It is a 20 liter, 5.3 gallon capacity. I think it has like a 2.6 gallon um, holding tank for all of your um, expendables, I guess. Uh, all, of, all the stuff that comes out of us. So I'm going to just pull this out of here. I've not actually done this yet, so this will be a first for me. And it's surprisingly light, which is good. It's got a handle in the back, actually two handles, like this. And there is the toilet. So now let's open it up. Oh, it comes with these things, that's good. And let's just test it out for size. Yeah, I think this is good. Kind of, so kind of a little bit of a toilet bowl, so you really have to kind of get your butt in there, but that's okay. I can manage that. Um, so I will actually kind of do a tour of this specific toilet later. Um, for now, I just want to check the size. So now what I'm going to do is open this. So this toilet was about $61 on Amazon, and this ottoman was $45. So for $100 you get to basically have a freestanding bathroom that you can move around. So let's see if I can pull this out. And this isn't really that heavy either. Just put this on there for now. Oops, I don't want to break anything. Okay, so this is the ottoman. And uh, it's kind of pretty. It's like kind of like a burnt orange. Burnt orange, rather. Let's pull this down. Like this. Okay. All right, so this is the space that we're looking at. Now, obviously this is here, so probably what I'm gonna to have to do is cut this out and also possibly remove the lid from the hinges. But what, what I wanna see is, will this actually fit inside? And let's see if I can do it sideways. Well, it doesn't actually fit, so that's not really going to work, is it? Okay. So maybe. So I actually need a smaller toilet or a bigger, bigger bathroom. Okay. That didn't work, did it? So my gamble didn't really pay off very well. Okay, so this is probably about an eighth of an inch too wide in the back, I guess. Maybe the measurements on Amazon didn't account for the handle. But it's not a total loss because this ottoman's actually made of pretty light, um, I guess, MDF or plywood or something. So what I'm actually going to do is cut out this wall so that the ottoman is going to have this as the front. And then it's going to open up like this. And I'm going to have the toilet facing this way. Maybe. No, I think it has to face this way. Okay. And what I'm also going to do is remove the hinges. So it's just going to be a lid on top. Since I actually have to also 
um, hollow out the inside of the lid, which will be easy as well. Um, since maybe I'm not really going to be sitting on top of it much, but even if I am, the toilet's going to be in there um, to kind of hold me as I sit on top of the ottoman. So I think what I'll do is that I'll go get my power tools and I will cut out the, uh, the back and um, somehow reinforce it. So that way when it closes, it will sit up against the wall this way with the toilet this way. And I think that's a good solution. Okay, so it's been a few days and my stupid decision to try to put a toilet inside an ottoman didn't quite work out. So I returned the ottoman to Amazon and they gave me my money back. And then I bought this like ottoman cover that I just put in Amazon uh, 20 inches by 20 inches ottoman cover. And this is pretty good. I think it'll work. It's got like an elastic bottom to it and it fits over. It's not perfect, but I can, you know, maybe get a sewing machine and fix it a little bit. But what's really great is that I can just pull this up and the toilet is right under there. And then I can just pull this down. It's gray, which is not really my color scheme, but I can sit on it perfectly fine. So yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good solution for now. Um, you know, I could always change it around. I did get a different ottoman cover that was way too big that I'm actually going to use for uh, like storage for my um, cold weather blankets. And then that way I can just sit on it and then, you know, stuff it with all my jackets and sweaters and all that stuff. So that's also a good reason to get these empty ottoman covers with the zippers. Um, but this one I just got for like, I don't know, like 20 bucks and it works. So that's a good way to conceal the toilet without having to uh, put it into a, um, you know, cabinet or something. So that way, if it breaks or leaks, then you can basically just take it out. So yeah, pretty good. So super happy. Big, big day. This is the first day dumping the shitter. <laughs> Thankfully, not to be too TMI, it's only number one, not number two. There are restrooms in the campground that I can do the, uh, the dirty, you know, like the, uh, the other one. Uh, number one though, I can do in my van. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna dump this out. Uh, only dump it at the dump stations. Uh, I guess you can dump it in a toilet if it's only number one, but just don't. Just do, just, you know, do what everyone else does. Um, and uh, just don't get pink eye. <laughs> don't let it splash in your face. That would be bad. Uh, obviously, it's not suitable for drinking. I don't know why anybody would think it was suitable for drinking. Uh, anyway, so yeah, just gonna dump this out and then head on the road. So I'm not gonna film dumping out the toilet. I'm sure you can find plenty of videos on YouTube of people dumping out their toilets. But anyway, the bottom section is the um, pee and uh, not poop, <laughs> uh, thankfully. Anyway, and then I have like a chemical packet that biodegrades, so it's supposed to be good for the environment. I don't know. I mean, you can drink your own pee, so I don't know why you would need like a chemical packet. I assume it's for the poo, but there's no poo in there. Anyway, too much information, um, but that's the toilet. It's working pretty well. It's not leaking or anything. Um, so basically you take the whole thing out and then you take the bottom part and you undo the little um, kind of like screw thing in the back, the lid, and then you go over here and you dump it out and then you be courteous and rinse it afterwards. So yeah, let's do that. Of course I wanted to be, uh, oops, I want to be discreet so I parked this way so people, you know, I mean they know what I'm doing but they're not going to have to see it. So. Like I said, I'm not filming uh, anything in regards to dumping it out, but you get the idea. Uh, this was about $60 and uh, well worth the money to have a toilet so you don't have to trek, you know, to the loo in the middle of the night. So yeah, let me just clean this out because it's swishing around like crazy. <laughs> oh, lovely. For the toilet, originally it was here where this new kitchen cabinet is. And what I did is I just covered another piece of plywood with this uh, wallpaper 
and just made a removable uh, partition. And then I just put this like, you know, grandma's doily thing over there. And then inside, obviously I've got a vacuum because I was screwing this in. But um, anyway, the toilet's in there. And then what I did is, um, if you move this out of the way, it just comes out. This lifts up and then I got an Ikea uh, pull out um, drawer and I haven't actually used the hardware that makes it pull out because I've got this carpet, this kind of rug that's in the way, but the rug's fine because it holds it in place. And then that way um, I can just pull the, the toilet out. Um, like at night, I can just leave it out in the van and then put it away when I'm driving. Um, so that looks just a lot nicer and then obviously I can just put this little partition back. I was going to do a proper kind of like door and stuff, but you know, it's like, I have another thing I got to learn. I'm like, oh, I got to watch a YouTube video about how to, how to put a hinge on a piece of plywood. Also the plywood's just not very strong. It's just very light. And I just wanted something that would um, kind of cover the area. I think I'll probably change the doily thing out to something else, um, something a little prettier, <laughs> you know? Uh, anyway, so it's all about being pretty. I put these new, um, like duvet covers make it a little brighter than the bohemian red quilts that I had that seemed kind of drab um, so just figured I'd brighten it up a little um, which is fine so anyway the toilet goes here working out pretty well uh, it's a little bit heavy once it gets even half full and that's just with number one not number two um, I've only had to do number two one time in it and uh, never again <laughs> so I'm gonna have to like hold it and wait till I get to a gas station or, or a campsite uh, but anyway, toilets are important if you uh, drink a lot of water and have to uh, pee a lot. So I'm very thankful I have it. And I'm thankful that I don't have to have it exposed anymore. Even though my stupid attempts at trying to put it in an ottoman and then trying to find some kind of, you know, cover for it, which didn't work out. Um, so the best place for it is under the bed. And I actually moved the um, clothing totes and put them in my new extra cabinet. So now I've got tons of storage, empty storage under the bed. Um, so that frees up a lot of space and also makes it more accessible. So I'm not hanging, having to hang upside down in the back of my van to try to get uh, to my workout clothes. So yeah, so toilet's good. Uh, so far, no leaks. If there is a leak, it's on a little tray. So hopefully that'll hold a little bit of water, um, but so far no issues. So now I've got another sunny day, so finally back in the van working, um, doing just doing some upgrades and, and all that stuff. So now I'm working on the plumbing, which was going to be originally like a full on plumbing and all that stuff. And I really just don't want to have to source water all the time. So I basically just need a sink for washing dishes and brushing my teeth and washing my hands, um, which I can do, you know, manually. Um, I did have a manual faucet, which, uh, you know, you just kind of pump it and then the water comes out and it's kind of ugly and it's not going to fit in that hole anyway. So I scrapped that idea and I just went with this copper uh, 16 inch by 16 inch sink. And then I got this Ikea cabinet. I think it's called like the Lilanjing or something. It's got a bunch of weird letters in it. Um, anyway, so that works fine. It fits in the space. And then I Velcroed, uh, used some sticky back Velcro to uh close the um the door so it's not going to fly open and then i'm only going to do gray water so for now until i can get a full plumbing system down the road i really just want to use it as a receptacle for you know the dirty water um and then i'll just drink filtered water uh just from filters and bottles and that kind of thing so anyway so this is a restaurant grade um jug which is really hard to find here in houston in person uh, I ended up going on Amazon and I got four for about $50. So they're about $12 each, um, which is fine. So they work, uh, they work pretty well. So this is again, restaurant grade. I think it's a five gallon jug. And then what I'm gonna do is basically, uh, this is a three and a half inch hole. And this sink was a little pricey, it was $130, but it's the one that fits exactly on top of this without having to try to cut a hole in a in a kitchen cabinet and it also it's kind of cute and pretty and heavy and all that stuff um which is what you want I was going to do kind of an on the uh like a under the counter sink and then I would have to get a um 
what is it like a um, sideboard or like a you know kitchen counter and I just didn't want to deal with that and then I was going to do one that's floating like just kind of sitting on top and obviously again I need a kitchen counter this one just drops in it's a drop-in sink and it fits exactly on top so then what I'm going to do is use this um, door weather proofing foam sticky back and just basically put it underneath underneath here and then just let it sit on top and that should be pretty secure and then what I did is I got this um, handy dandy little three inch three and a half inch thing that fits right on top not the prettiest uh, Home Depot didn't have any other colors but that's fine and then this actually screws into my Camco camper drain and the uh, this end screws into this and then this end goes into the top of the bottle very 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 simple probably the most simple that you can get um, but it means that I don't have to brush my teeth outside and spit the water out or do anything gross like that I can basically be self-contained and then when I dump my toilet out which I by the way I put under the bed so now it's it's secured away I also put another cabinet put this cabinet from Ikea it's called Lilanjing Lil Lil and there's a bunch of weird letters in it, it begins with L and um, you know obviously there's like a shelf in there but I'm not gonna use the shelf so it matches everything I think everything's coming along nicely so I've obviously got to fix the back you know shiplap and all that stuff that's falling apart obviously I didn't pick the most sturdy wood um, which is fine I can redo it anyway so today I'm going to put the sink in um, and then connect the water I guess just connect the pipes and then just test it out and then like I said this is only gray water I've got four of these which I got off Amazon uh, restaurant grade um, bottles which is great uh, this is about $50 for four of them so about $12 $12-$13 each um, so it's really hard to find here in Houston like in like no restaurant supply stores had any of these so they were like what and I'm like jerry can for water restaurant grade and they're like no we don't have those so I went on Amazon found these I'll link it in the comments and hopefully you guys can can check that out so I also velcroed the door shut so it's not going to fly open and this is a drop-in sink it was about $130 a little bit pricey but it's the exact one that fits and the one that I want and um, you know you just go with what you love even if it's a little bit more expensive so yeah so we'll see just going to be for washing dishes washing hands and uh, I did have a faucet that's kind of ugly and it doesn't actually fit in this hole so I'm just going to put these flowers in the hole instead so there make that look pretty and hopefully that will work so let's uh, let's test this out you can see what I'm doing here I'm just putting this weather strip on and then I will remove the sticky back stuff and then stick it on here uh, this is um, you can basically use any thickness uh, just basically it's so that it doesn't make a noise when I'm driving and it doesn't move around and it just can kind of eventually just kind of settle in um, and just be held in place so later I'll do like a much better job <laughs> you know um, and it's funny you go a few days without filming the build and then you start building and forget that you're supposed to be filming so um, yeah so I'm not really doing a lot of time lapse during this time because we've had just really bad weather since I've been home since yesterday so I just don't feel like setting everything up and having the rain come in so anyway rainy day projects uh, this is one of them setting up the plumbing you can always do this when it's raining outside or snowing or you know whatever weather that you have and then um, when it's nice weather you can like open your doors and, and work on some painting and gluing and all that stuff I do have to glue I measured and tried to stick the uh, extra bits up so I do have to glue this uh, a little bit later today so hopefully hoping the weather holds up stops raining and I can keep my door open you can see that the Camco uh, cord fits perfectly uh, this again is a three and a half inch I don't even know what it's called um, spring clip sink strainer so um, just make sure you've got one that's wide enough to cover the hole uh, this was only about $15 at Home Depot and on Amazon if I got one that was the same color as the sink, it'd be about $40 or $50. So that's why I'm not really bothered about the color. It's probably something I'm going to replace along the way as it gets kind of grungy and stuff. Um, so that's good. I'm not really married to the color. I'm fine with it. Um, anyway, so that's how it works. And now I'm going to connect 
the hose to the top of the uh, gallon jug, five gallon jug. Now what I need to do is cut. So this cord actually has a bit halfway through that looks like the end. Um, and then this end bit just pops out um, with a little bit of, you know, a little bit of elbow grease so you can get this thing out. Anyway, so I think what I'm gonna do is cut, unfortunately, with my little exacto knife, cut at the end rather than in the middle of this bit. I'm gonna cut at the end right here and then that should be short enough because right now it's just too long and it's just moving everything around. So yeah, if I cut it off, it should be fine. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll just have to order another one. I think these are only about like eight bucks, so not too expensive. Anyway, but it fits nice. Um, and like I said, only having one jug. If I had an actual faucet, I would have a second jug with uh, fresh water uh, with a smiley face on it. And this one I would draw a sad face or a thundercloud, um, just so you know not to drink it or maybe a, a emoji poo. Um, and then uh, that would go up to the faucet, which would be up here. So now I'm just gonna cut and then hopefully. Now the only thing too is that I cut a hole. Where is it at? I cut a hole in the cap and it doesn't actually um, fit. The uh, end bit is actually too long. Now another solution is I take the end bit off and I just shove the whole pipe into the uh, jug, which I think I'm gonna do actually. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm not gonna cut because I hate cutting and, and you know, all that stuff. And, and I have this big fear that I'm gonna cut something and it's just gonna break or be wrong. So I think what I'll do is take off the end since it doesn't actually fit through the hole. And I think I'm just gonna shove the whole pipe into it and that should be a good solution because all it's doing is collecting water um, now when you clean it out obviously you're going to have to get a towel and it's going to be you know submerged up to about this point halfway in the jug so if it's all gross and like you know like I don't know backwash and all that nasty stuff um, it's going to this pipe's going to be pretty gross so uh, yeah a solution might be to wrap it in saran wrap which you'll have to do every time, which would not be very eco-friendly. Or just, you know, grab a dish towel or a flour sack dish towel or something, you know, nice and, and you know, earth-friendly and just kind of wipe it down as you pull it out. So anyway, I will uh, visit that day when it comes. Right now the jug's empty, so don't have to worry about that. Okay, that works. Uh, that's fine, and I removed this bit here. So I'll just save that if later I want to do a full plumbing system or maybe have a, a taller cabinet. Um, so that works for now. The only thing is it doesn't stay in place up here. Um, so obviously uh, I'm gonna have to get some kind of sealant uh, to make sure this is sealed, um, which I'm sure I could just find uh, another trip to Home Depot. It took me forever today over there. I was like, what is it? And then I realized it was Saturday. Cause you know, all the days kind of meld together when you're, you're doing a van build. Um, so anyway, so that works fine. Um, I'll just have to be super careful that it doesn't leak uh, and just kind of, you know, aim for the hole when I'm washing things out. But for now, that's fine. I'll just have to go back and get sealant or some kind of rubber gasket or something, whatever. Whatever the internet's gonna tell me to get, I will get that uh, so I can seal it and it's not gonna leak. So yeah, there we go. We are done with the plumbing. Oh, that was so hard. <laughs> Actually it wasn't, but this is the last thing that I was gonna get was the, uh, the plumbing. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a process. You know, I went on a whole trip for a week uh, without plumbing and uh, now I have it, that I think it would be much better to, um, to have, you know, at least make it look like a home. So now I've got a sink, I've got a little fridge, I've got a little electric cooker, um, I've got, you know, my lockers, um, all you need is love. <laughs> so, and then I got to tackle the ceiling. I did put the headliner stuff up, but that'll be another episode. So now I got to go back and redo the ceiling and then fill in the gap. So yeah, it's getting there. It is looking like a home. So super happy. We'll see how long this lasts. I can't use it till I seal it, so. So this is my solution for the kitchen counter. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take this Ikea uh, I think it's like 20 inches by 22 inches or something. It's a large chopping board that has a little bit of a ledge on it. 
Um, so this is the upside down part of it, the under part. So I drew a square, <laughs> um, which basically is the um, sink portion of the sink. And then what I'm going to do is cut this out tomorrow because it's dark right now, as you can see. Um, and I'm just going to drop the sink in. I'm going to seal it and that should work as a kitchen counter and also gives me an extra bit of uh, surface area uh, to cover over the back of the cabinet. And then I can secure that to the wall and then that way it stays in place. So um, that's fine. I think that would work. <laughs> so we'll see. I did buy another one from Bed Bath & Beyond uh, that was about the same size, but this is prettier wood. Um, so I'm gonna take the other one back and I think that should be fine uh, just to do it this way. So I got the jigsaw and I will attempt to cut this out tomorrow and hopefully it will work. If not, I'm just out 20 bucks. So uh, and then find another solution. I should probably try to figure out how to put the legs on the cabinet so it's a little higher. Although right now it is level with the sink area. And uh, even though I'm quite tall, <laughs> uh, well, 5'8", um, it would be nice to have a higher cabinet, although I think this will work. Uh, this is fine because also when the um, the couch bed or the bed is up as a couch, uh, the other thing is that this will, um, you know, if it was any higher, there'd be no place to kind of put your legs. <laughs> so right now you'll be able to put your legs in the sink, um, which isn't that comfortable if you're sitting in the couch um, position. But you know, I don't really want it too high. I just kind of want to keep everything free and open. So yeah, let's see if this works tomorrow. I'll get up early and uh, try to cut a hole in a piece of wood. <laughs> so, it's like the most terrifying thing is to cut holes. Like when I did the uh, ceiling fan, I didn't do it. I had someone else do it. And I was like, I am not cutting a hole in metal. And this is about the same size hole. This is 13 inch by 11 inches. So uh, yeah, let's hopefully uh, do this correctly. So I'm not gonna end up having to go buy another piece of wood. The next thing I'm going to do is work on fixing the sink. So originally I bought this one um, sink drain that has like, you know, it's a three and a half inch wide with a one and a half inch, uh, I guess, um, screw. And what I needed to get was the one that actually had the attachment that enables it to attach into and stay in place in this hole, which is three and a half inches wide. This is my gray water tank. I'm not going to do a faucet right now, I'll do that later, but I'll probably put the faucet right here and then just connect it under. Right now it's just toilet paper and cereal storage back there, but eventually I'll do a, um, uh, a fresh water tank which will sit where the cereal is sitting and then the grey water tank will sit uh, here in the front just kind of like this and connect in. So what I'm going to do now, as you see I've labelled it grey water, is I'm going to figure out how to make this straight. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but I want it basically to just go straight into the uh, grey water tank. And for that, I've got this uh, piece of, uh, I guess, PVC pipe that will just sit. Uh, it'll attach. This will basically attach to this new, this new thing, just like this. And it will screw in and then we'll just drop into the, uh, the grey water tank right here. So that's the plan. I'm going to see if it'll work. Uh, the good thing is now that we're hitting thunder, snow, uh, freezing temperatures here in Houston for like the first, I don't know, first time in 30 years, everyone's freaking out. Uh, it's no big deal for me because I'm used to the cold and thankfully at least my pipe's not going to freeze. So that's a good thing. 
So that's one benefit about being in a van is uh, you're probably not going to end up with uh, frozen house pipes. So let's see if this will work and then uh, it'll be a step closer to getting a full plumbing system. But this is better than the Camco thing that I had, uh, which is right here. As you can see, this is uh, kind of bendy. And what was happening is when it attached to this right here, uh, it was actually moving the um, gray water bottle. And so it wasn't very stable and it was pushing the metal um, sink drain up. So when I seal it with this silly putty kind of stuff, this plumber's putty, um, hopefully the new thing that I bought will stay in place. And this thing I can just donate or hopefully take back if I still have the box. So we'll see. Okay, you want to be kind of generous on the plumber's putty. And it's not like Play-Doh, it's a little more, um, um, I don't know, it's a little tougher to get out of the jar, but you want to let it kind of bleed over a little bit. And then when you screw everything together, it will actually um, squeeze out and then you just clean it around the edges. So that's the first step. Second step is to um, fit the fixture, uh, drop that in, and then underneath put this piece, and then this piece, and then this piece, actually one, two, three, and then four, and then finally put the sink drain in. So that should be better, and then I'll take the other one back. I think I still have the box, so we should be good. That fits in quite nicely. And as you see, it uh, bleeds over the edges, but I'll clean that up at the end. So as you can see here, this um, fits perfectly. It's one and a half inches, and it will just attach right here. Uh, just kind of like this and then uh, the other bit that I'm holding will be put in okay that looks great so that's screwed in it's not totally tightened because I still need to attach this bit right here so that's the next bit I'll do and hopefully it'll be good we'll see <laughs> that's every time I do a step I'm like hopefully it'll be good oh my god <laughs> we don't know So as you can see, it all spewed out the top, which is fine. And then I'll just um, remove the excess. And then under here, that is attached nicely. And you want to make sure it's as super tight as possible. And then I think I got the longer, um, I got the 12 inch PVC pipe and I should have gotten the six inch. So probably what I'll end up doing is removing this, which is fine. You don't have to remove the whole thing. You can just unscrew just right here. So I think I'll take that off and cut it. Um, but let's see if the uh, let's see if this fits. Yeah, because when this is full, you don't want to have to tip it. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to cut it. Um, I think I have a, a I just use an exacto knife and I'm going to cut it. And I think the six inch should be fine. So I just want it maybe just an inch or two into the jug so that it's not going to um, to move around or leak. So this is pretty solid. It's not uh, it's not going to move. So that's nice. Um, again, you want to keep this as, as tight as possible, like this. Um, so yeah, I think I'll just either cut it or maybe just take the piece back and get the, um, I'm right here in the Home Depot parking lot right now. I think I'll just go back and get the six inch piece. I quickly ran back into Home Depot. So it was good that I was working in their parking lot and I switched it out for a six inch and I'm just gonna put that back up in that same place. That is perfect. And now get my gray water bottle and it just slides right in there, hopefully. There we go. <laughs> I have to move the sink a little bit. Um, it goes right in and it turns sideways. And that is my, my gray water. So just don't let it fill up too much, probably not past this little kind of indent. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. And I still have a little bit of storage, not as much because it's sideways now, but I'll be able to put um, some of these things back in. Um, so at least, you know, maximize the space. So that'll be good. So yeah, and now I'm just gonna clean up um, the rest of the putty, which is already coming off and drying um, where it's exposed. So that makes it easy. So now I'm gonna do a quick test with the water. So I'm gonna pour the water in and just kind of pour it around. And hopefully it's not gonna leak. Okay, no leaks, so that's good. 
so that is currently drinkable <laughs> that's currently fresh water in there I've not had any grey water um, now I don't have a faucet you're probably wondering well what's the point well I can wash dishes I can use a spray bottle with a little bit of um, what is it like a, a dish soap um, you know and just kind of use it minimally minimally and also um, just be able to put my dishes in there rinse them out very easily uh, it doesn't seem like it's leaking so that's good just want to make sure it's hard because it's getting so cold right now that I don't know if it's wet or cold because it's metal it's copper um, so anyway so that's kind of the plan and eventually like I said I'll put the other bottle where those toilet papers are and hook it up to a proper faucet uh, down the road but for now um, since I'm on a bit of an incline all the water is accumulating on one side but it's not leaking so that's good so I'm just going to dry this out just so there's no standing water and it looks like that's good I think that will work perfectly well for now all day with no heat and it was fine like for most of the day <laughs> and I have my my Japanese blanket so I've been under that in my apartment um, and then suddenly as soon as it got dark the temperature dropped like another 10 degrees so my face is actually frozen which is weird because I, I like the cold anyway so I'm now in the van I did not think I'd have to spend a night in my van in my apartment parking lot but a lot of people are leaving and I'm just hearing cars skid down my road and there's no way I'm driving anywhere and where am I going to go, you know? So I put the heat on for a little bit um, and because it's insulated with wool, it's actually pretty warm in here. I had the heat on a little bit earlier and then I have these um, like thermal curtains. Uh, these curtains are uh, thermal insulating curtains and then I have uh, curtains on the back. So. Um, I'm just going to warm this up it'll take about 15 minutes and then I can turn the heat down to like uh, and it's idling the car which I you know it's not envi environmentally friendly but I have no electricity in my house no lights no power nothing the fridge is starting to smell so I'm gonna come down here I've actually got everything I need I've got a fridge I've got a stove I can power everything off the off the vehicle so I'm gonna make some uh, make some dinner <laughs> and kind of just freeze to death here no I'm just kidding actually it's gonna feel really nice and then I can watch Netflix um, since I have Wi-Fi and I've got USB chargers which I can't do upstairs because I've got no electricity so I think I'm just gonna sleep in here tonight um, I think I'll turn the heat off uh, turn the car off in a couple hours and then that way it'll stay warm overnight and actually this is about just a little colder than it was when I was camping uh, the problem is that there was no sun today so it didn't warm up the vehicle from the outside which is what it did when I was uh, camping in the canyons the, the vehicle was really nice and warm just from the sun hitting it um, but we've had no sun today like a little bit of blue sky and nothing else so I'm gonna do that and then um, just do some projects I've got this uh, sample packs of I'm wearing gloves sample packs of um, uh, like sticky back wallpaper and I'm gonna put that up in places like right over here I've got this like piece of wood right here that I need to uh, cover so I'm gonna do kind of a patchwork design with the samples and uh, just kind of work on a few things and just relax and then hopefully the electricity will come on tonight if not I'll just sleep in here and wake up I got breakfast I got almond milk oat milk I got all the food I was supposed to leave today for a trip and that's not happening so I'm just gonna stay in the van I guess as if I'm traveling um, but it is actually safer to be in here 
I've got all the security locks, alarms, everything. Um, plus my neighbors know me and they're probably annoyed with me by now from building this thing for a month. Actually, it took two weeks. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna stay in here and then just kind of hang out. And uh, I've got a sink, I've got plumbing, I've got water. Literally, like this van was ready to go on a nine day trip today, or uh, sorry, seven day trip. And it's not happening. So um, I've got at least enough food for seven days if I'm stuck in here the whole time. Plus a full tank of gas. So uh, yeah, always fill your gas tank. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna do that and just relax. I've got the bed. It's actually warming up. I've been in here for like, I've been talking for three and a half minutes and it's already feeling pretty warm. So that's my plan for the evening is just to kind of, you know, and I don't have to look at a crappy ceiling anymore. I'm gonna get more of this like tapestry design and, and it's like a vinyl. It's the same thing that's over here. Get more of that and put it on the ceiling a little bit later, you know, next week or something. So yeah, just gonna relax. That's the plan. So I'm back in the van this morning. Um, the snow is finally melting, but it's gonna rain and get below zero again. So, um, well, zero Celsius uh, Fahrenheit, below 37 Fahrenheit again. So, which means that all the rain's gonna turn to ice. And even if I wanted to leave, I can't because there's just a gigantic ice rink on my side of the parking lot since I'm in the shade. And even if I pulled out of here, if I tried to back in, even with all-terrain tires, I'd probably skid into my neighbor's really lovely retro van and probably hit this SUV. Um, so I'm just not leaving. Instead, what I'm doing is uh, working on a few things in, in, the, uh, in the van. Um, I moved my sleeping bag up here to give a little extra room under the bed. Um, I basically just um, brought some things down. I've got the bag for the Camco toilet, which actually has frozen. So I need to take that upstairs and uh, it's got number one in it. So um, I, I think I can dump it out in my toilet. Thankfully my plumbing hasn't frozen upstairs, but the toilet did down here. So I need to get that up. This is a Camco bag, which is really great if you want to be stealth when taking your toilet into a building so you don't look like you're hauling a uh, porta potty. Um, I'm also gonna switch out my thermal curtains with these ones that have stars. And then I'm gonna move these thermal curtains um, right here, move these uh, to the back. So I have to get another, I think I have another pole. I have to look in my storage unit, which I can't get to right now because there's an ice rink. So I've got to, um, uh, yeah, switch these out. So I'm gonna put these curtains in the back across the back here. And then I'm gonna put the ones with the stars in the front. I've also got this mirror that I got. It's like a um, like a mirror right here. Um, and so it, it came with four magnets. I put these extra magnets on that I got from Home Depot. And that's gonna go on the inside of this door right here. So the great thing about having lockers is that everything's magnetized. I also put this uh, magnetized um, uh, roller for the uh, paper towels and the toilet paper and the um, uh, baby wipes. This is also magnetized with all my cooking utensils now that I have a skillet. Um, so yeah, so I'm just basically adding a few extra things and then uh, just kind of pretty this up a little bit. And then once the weather gets a little warmer, I can open the back and reorganize the garage under the bed and then figure out uh, how to just, you know, redo that so it's um, a little bit easier to get to because right now it's kind of hard. I just kind of dumped the, the uh, what is this, the um, laundry basket here, which will stay here actually, and then my clothes are under there. But I need to make it a little easier to get to. Okay, so with the van build, everything's trial and error. I wanted to put this mirror, this is the back of the mirror with the magnets, right here, but there's this, kind of this partition thing. So that's not gonna work, so I'll just put it on the outside. Um, I was thinking maybe I could put it down here, but then I'd have to like kneel down or lay down uh, to look in the mirror. So I think I'll just put it on the front. I think that will fit nicely and that should be fine. And then if I'm doing like, you know, Instagram pictures uh, from my door right here, I'll just take the mirror off, you know, so you don't see me taking a picture of myself. That mirror looks fine and I think that'll work perfectly. Um, that way, at least if I'm in the um, front seat, I can just use the mirror, uh, just kind of pull the door open. Much better than trying to use the, uh, rearview mirror up there. 
it doesn't work very well you end up with wonky makeup and then contacts in the wrong eyes <laughs>